Welcome to Drum and Drummer, a podcast focused on drums, drumming and drummers. I'm George Pickering and that's Ben Winty and we are both professional drummers in this business we call music. So stick around and join us as we pass the time whilst trying to stay in time. Sort of sums up the 90s really. Yeah, friends and Microsoft Word. Joining me once again, it's George Pickering. Ah, in the hey, George boy. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. Yeah, I'm just to say, you're very, you're very planty. Very pl- <laughs> yeah. Oh, very my plant. God. Hang on. I left the timer on from something. Is that oh, yeah. 20 hours? Let's reset because we've got a lot to talk about, so I'm going to put a timer yeah, on. Yeah, we have got um, uh, shit loads to get through. A bucket have. full of shit loads. <laughs> I am planty because I'm back in my flat. This is where I'm going to do the podcast from here on out until they get if they get better Wi-Fi at the studio. And if they don't, fine. It's, it's warm here. You know, there's tea-making facilities. <laughs> Same as the studio, actually. There yeah. isn't much difference between my studio and my flat, in a way, you know? Just I probably sleep at the studio. Just know? a percentage of loneliness. Well, this is it, but my percentage of loneliness and is it's always... it's more lonely in the flat than... <laughs> I think it might be, yeah. <laughs> I do sometimes go to my little place where other people rent studios just to talk to someone. There's usually someone there, you know. Yeah. Hey, yeah. what are you doing? You doing some practicing? Oh, no, it's all right. Yeah, sorry, I'll leave you to it. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> bye. You know, that's <laughs> usually how the conversations go. <laughs> um, right, what should we begin with? Well, let's start with uh, Ben Corner's birthday party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we went out together, which since doing the podcast has happened... Aside from the UK drum show, because that was more business. It was all once. business, baby. <laughs> um, wasn't. What the Guinness make, says otherwise. Any money. Um, <laughs> uh, we went out once, maybe, to the Young Pine gig yeah. as drum and drummer. Beyond that, we haven't done anything, you know? No. I don't, I don't, we weren't there at Ben Corner's 30th birthday party as a podcast, but we were there together. Um, Arrived separately, ex- left separately. Yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, but we got invited. Um, played uh, a lot of shows with Ben. He's a guitarist, uh, yep. and he cordially invited us to his birthday, mm. um, which was a sort of <laughs> open sort of jam night thing at yep. a rehearsal studios. Not mine, um, no, but another one. And I think I described it in a WhatsApp as your dream and my nightmare. Well, I was going to say, you brushed over that quite quickly because it's a, re- it's a rehearsal slash... No, it's, it is just rehearsal. It's, there's, there's no recording going on there. There is um, now. Is there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd say they're your rivals in terms of they're the closest one to you, you know? Yeah, they're very close. Um, but, you know, so is Manchester City and Bolton. So, but <laughs> different true. leagues, isn't it? <laughs> But yeah, you're not a fan of. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I had to. I had to venture into the enemy's territory. <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, but yeah, but I didn't know if you were going to turn up because you were having dinner with your mum. Yeah. Um, how was that? Is that right? Lovely, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I turned up and who was sat behind the kit having his little jam? It was old <laughs> Georgie boy. There you were. Of course, he's well, on the drums. Well, what was funny is when I turned up, I turned up late. Ah, here's something, right? So I have a theory of parties. I don't know if I told you this. Never, ever turn up on time. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Um, say it starts at seven, which it did. Turn up at half eight. Turn up at half eight. Because, and it works at any time. You know, if it, if party starts at nine, turn up at quarter to 11. You know what I mean? Uh, you but know. I, th- I think that's, a, I think, right, because obviously no, no one turns up on time. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's no. so common not to turn up on time. But I think what's now happened is you have to go... So don't turn up at seven, turn up at half seven. Mm. But everyone knows not to turn up at seven. So you know everyone's starting at half seven. So unofficially yeah. it starts at half seven. Yeah. So then you've got to push it and go, well, if everyone's going to start at half seven because no one wants to start at seven, then I've got to come at at least eight to actually yeah. be sort of fashionably late to the party. But they're triple bluffing because everyone knows that. So everyone knows, well, don't go at seven, get there at half seven. But if everyone knows that, then everyone's <laughs> going to get there at eight because no one wants to be the first to get there at half seven. So you're going another level. We're on inception level shit. So you're yeah. going, I'll turn up at half eight. Wow. That was like a Michael Kira. What was, what's his name? Michael Sira? C- what, 
the guy who talks very quickly. He was in the uh, the Social Network film. Oh yeah. no, that's uh, uh, Jesse <laughs> Eisenberg. You're talking. Yeah, about. that was like yeah. Jesse Eisenberg. That was that was mad. Um, well, anyway, I turned up at half eight, and by that time, there's enough people there that you're like, they're like, oh, George is here, but it's not so many people that it's. Was half anyone 10 like, oh, George people. is here though? Were they? Well, yeah, and okay. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why, because there were no drummers yet, uh, so the kit hadn't even been set up, and they went, oh, you're the only drummer who's here, and possibly the only one that will turn up. So it's likely you'll have to play all night. And I went, oh, oh no, no, that's yeah. a shame. Yeah. Um, and Ben was like, could you set the kit up? Because no one knows how to set a kit up. I was like, yes, I would be happy to. And then he gets to playing. I was just about to play. And then someone who is a drummer walks in and he was like, oh, do you mind if I go first? I was like, yeah, cool. And then I remember as I was playing, I think I saw Stefan, who is a friend of both of us, who <laughs> is a fantastic drummer. And mm -hmm. I went, Ah, oh, fuck. He's here. <laughs> <laughs> he, Were no you hoping now. you'd be the best drummer in the room until I, I was, arrived? I was hoping I'd be the only drummer in the room, to be honest. Okay. When they said that, I was like, well, I get to play all night. And then suddenly all these other people turned up and I was like, oh, I'm going to have to share the sticks. And the sticks are like big old tree trunks with plastic tips. Um, didn't take your own ben, sticks? No, God, no, no. No, no I didn't do that. Um, but then you turned up, which was a, a shock and a pleasant surprise. And, uh, yeah, we just sort of, so I know. was even more fashionably late. I took it to the yeah. fourth level. I turned up about 10 turn past up? nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you'd been having whatever you had for dinner. Yeah. Lovely dinner. Thank you. Um, but yes, you <laughs> got played the drums, uh, and I didn't. Yeah. I don't think we need to dwell on it any more than that. No. But it was we lovely. It was together. nice. It was, uh, it was good. Yeah, I actually cool. enjoyed myself. Um, so thank you, Ben, for inviting us. Yeah, thank you, Ben Corner. Uh, right, um, what else we got, George? What else we got? Yeah, what do you want to do next? It. Email or icebreaker? Let's do email. Let's do email. And we'll do icebreaker. Okay, okay. We've had an email. <laughs> Come in. We need, we need a. We need a. Um, we need a uh, um, bit jingle. of music for that. Right? Yeah, jingle. Yeah. That's the word. I'll, I'll 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 sort something out. I'll leave it not, not for this week, but no, no, no. I'm busy. But I'll um, <laughs> sort something out for another time. But we had an email all the way from France. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah, so uh, Kevin R has uh, has been in touch. Um, hello, Ben and George. Uh, he's put my name first, not because I'm the senior <laughs> member of the uh, Much team. Like but you put your name first on everything. <laughs> alphabetical, isn't it? <laughs> uh, hello, Ben and George. I heard your surprise at France being high on the list of countries that you get listeners. Because uh, on the one of the Christmas or... I, I quizzed you. Yes. I? And I remember saying, well, bonjour, motherfuckers, when it turned out that France is the third most... Listen to no, I've said that wrong. France is the most, third most listened to country. Yeah, no. <laughs> I couldn't well, change the sentence as I was saying it. Yeah. Basically, our top listeners goes UK, America, France. Yeah. And, uh, uh, so I thought I'd uh, say hi from France. There's about three hundred thousand UK expats here, some working and some retired. Amongst them are musicians that play in bands at bar slash restaurant gigs. Uh, lots going on outdoors in the summer. I've even met a couple of British drummers of a very high standard. One's an ex-drum check tech with a shaved head. <laughs> uh, he's probably listening, so there's more than you'd think. He's probably not, but let's hope he is. Yeah. Um, Kevin goes on to say, I'm a 65-year-old learner. I bought an electric kit at age 60, started off with some lessons. They're mainly self-taught using RSL gradebooks to learn to read drum notation and keep the grey matter going, and I'm really enjoying it. A couple of years on, I went acoustic, a Yamaha stage custom. I know that you like pictures, see attached. Got an old mm. outbuilding renovated, and I practice most days and have the odd lesson when visiting the UK. Currently dipping into songs grade four and five. If only I'd started younger. Regards from Kevin. Well, that's lovely, isn't Thank it? Thank you so much, Kevin. Oh, Thank so you for lovely. emailing so in. Lovely. And uh, we've got, and got the picture my up here. water kit. Lovely stage custom. Cannot go wrong with the Yami stage. The yeah. MESC, the stage custom. It's a newer one. I can tell by the badge. Mm. I can tell mm. by the badge. And looks as well like he's got himself a, I'm going to say a set of, um, I might be wrong, but they look like Zildjian A customs. Can I say also the hardware looks lovely? 
Those oh, Yamaha stands. hardware, mate. Just beautiful. It's you know lovely. I mean? Single brace. Just that, that that Yamaha hardware will just go on for days, for years. Yeah. And he's got his uh, Vic Firth practicing headphones. Yeah. Lovely little setup on it. He's got a little um, s- uh, sort of, not filing cabinet, but there's some papers there. Love to know what that is, Kev. You know what I mean? Yeah. What could it, be music, know, could be... Transcriptions of our podcast, maybe. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But um, thank you so much for getting in touch. And yeah, uh, late learner so at the much. drums, but glad you're enjoying it. Yep. And uh, yeah, keep them coming in, people. Cause, um, keep them coming in. Send it us does, your it kit genuinely does, Not to sound cheesy, but it genuinely makes our day when we see an email. We go, oh, look at that. Look at that definitely email. Does, yeah. yet, thank you very Senior much for people. listening. Yeah. And spread um, the, the, the bon word. <laughs> French for good, isn't really it? good, yeah, really good yeah. French there, mate. Um, What's next on our list, mate? We're what should uh, we do icebreaker. Let's do icebreaker. So I did icebreaker the the Pompey Music Festival that happens in Huinta, which is quite a good idea, I think, because all festivals happen in summer. And then I can't remember the name of the guy that runs it and organises it. It's my dad's mate's son. I can't remember his name, but he went. Hang on nothing going on in winter especially feb let's let's do a festival then and they i think his name's mike or someone and they go whoa mike oh, i can't bother to make up the story <laughs> right so <laughs> so uh it's a it's a um is it on two days now or just one i think it was just oh i don't know i think it was just one just one so um as far as i know the history of it so we used to have a thing called Southsea Fest mm. which was in sort of September mm. and basically Albert Road and Elm Grove all the pubs and venues along that place turn into gig venues for the day it's one of them all day sort of things you get a wristband you can just walk in and out much mm. like sort of Camden Rocks yeah. things like that in London most most cities have something like that and Southsea Fest was going for a number of years and I, I played it a few times um, and then Victorious turned up the weekend before yeah <laughs> And then, basically, everyone went to Victorious, yeah. and Southsea Fest sort of died on its ass. Yeah. Um, but it was, I don't think it's the same people, but anyway, they sort of resurrected that idea of a one-day multi-venue street festival, mm. and thought, well, let's do it in the fucking winter, yeah, where exactly. there is no other gigs, no other festivals, no, and things like that. Um, but you were there with uh, Ren? Yeah. Well, we played there last year on the Wedgwood room stage and I think she genuinely didn't want to do it again because she thought well we're not going to get that slot again so what's the point <laughs> and then they messaged us and said look we've had a band pull out can you guys do it and we she was almost reluctant she, I, I think genuinely she was like it'd be a bit of a come down to go from because it's so much fun to play the wedge and it's a, if it's a, you know fairly filled room and then instead not to sound like we're too good for any of the other venues but i think she was like i don't know we just played again i don't know i'm not sure but anyway she was like well what is it and they said well it's edge of the wedge at seven and she went yeah okay let's do it but she sort of was like do you guys want to do it we literally played the edge last week we're like yeah okay we'll do it um and it was great it was probably my best playing i've ever done you know, I mean, we've talked okay. about this before, like what makes it your best playing. Um, but sometimes you just have a gig and for whatever reason, it's just everything's working well. You know, the sound's good in your ears. Um, everything's set up nice. I think something that added to it was the fact that I use my own stool, my own drum throne, mm-hmm. um, which is a bit of a game changer because they said you have to bring one. And it doesn't sound like much to the non-drummers listening, but... It really is. I mean, if you think about it, like we always bring all our whole setup to a function gig, but then you've got to play a function gig. But a lot of these sorts of gigs, it's like you borrow a lot of stuff, so you're sort of competing. Whereas this, the kit was quite good. Everything was in quite a nice place. I didn't have to stretch or I didn't have to, you know, struggle. Um, so it kind of felt like my kit. And yeah, I just felt relaxed, comfortable. And I was having I was having a bloody good laugh as well because uh first of all, um Millie, aka singer of Wren, aka Wren, she was wearing these hair extensions, which at first I went, 
cool your hair's grown a lot and she was like yeah mikey said that you guys don't understand hair and i was like well no obviously i don't but um dunk the guitarist got his guitar head caught in uh, her hair during maybe the first or did she get her hair caught in well dunk's guitar this is it the two are not mutually exclusive um and then it got snagged and then she couldn't get it out and (laughs) i was just playing pissing myself i was like this is the funniest thing like she just and her dad came on stage and was like untangling it and um and i'll put any of it online that i can find because it was very funny and then later on in the set i sort of I, i i ended a fill and like just let the drumstick let it leave my hand and it like pinged off the low tom and flew into the air and then like just missed dunk and that made a few people laugh and then then Mikey, the bass player, was wearing like this sleeveless leather jacket and he got really hot really quick. So he was trying to get it off before he started the song. And it was a song where I don't come in. To, I mean, you've seen me play where it's like I will sort of sit there for two minutes and then have to play a loud beat for a minute. And then that's me for another two minutes at times. Um, so he was trying to get this leather jacket off. And he just looks at me like, come on, help me, help me, help me. And and I start getting off him. And then I'm I just take picturing it off Ross him. from Friends. Oh, trying God. to get you his leather pants. Ex- you have to explain what's the scene. I haven't seen Friends, you know. This. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Ross goes <laughs> on a date. And uh, I think he's newly divorced. And he tries to look cool. So he wears leather trousers. Right. Um, and then he gets all quite hot and sweaty. Uh, in these leather trousers as they're on the sofa. Yeah. And then he's like, goes to the toilet to sort of try and cool down. And so he takes, pulls the trousers down and sort of sprinkles water on his legs to cool down. And then the trousers won't go back up. <laughs> so then he phones Chandler, but Chandler's not there. So Joey, he speaks to Joey. And then Joey's like, oh, find some like cream. So he smothers his legs in cream to try and get the trousers up. Doesn't happen. <laughs> oh, try like talcum powder. Tries that. And then it just makes this big white messy paste all around his legs and he just can't get his trousers back up well there you go it was and that was the like 90s that. And that was <laughs> to get over it um sort of sums up the 90s really yeah friends and microsoft word um so <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i and i Carter. saw a meme once and it was like the microsoft logo and the friends picture and someone said this was the 90s and i was like yeah um, pretty much, pretty much. Anyway, so so I get his jacket off him finally, and then rather than just putting it on the floor, I went, I'm just going to wear this. And then a few people laughed, and I was like, ah, oh, this is my role for the show. I'm just a comedian. The clown. You know what I mean? Yeah, a just clown. a clown. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, at what point does Millie go, George, stop pissing around? This is the Throwing eternal, drumsticks. This is the eternal question, because <laughs> I'm the session drummer. You know what I mean? I have to just sit there, play the beat, <laughs> and let her be the show but if someone passes you a leather jacket you're going to put it on and do the Fonzie fingers you know e. so um, yeah but other than that great gig everything went well uh, it was just in and out smash and grab smash and grab I mean I got there at 6 did you we watch any playing, other bands? we were playing at 7 no I did not I had work the next no. day so I um as soon as we were done, I loaded out, managed to park on the road next to the gig, which is surprising, and just left afterwards. I would have, I would have liked to have stayed, um, see Archie, or no, he was on before us. Would have. He saw come, you. Yeah, he saw me. I didn't manage to get there on time before because, all disclosure, full full disclosure, not all disclosure, full disclosure. I hadn't prepared anything for the gig that morning. And had to make the whole live set. So it was kind of, you know, just got it done before leaving for the gig. Um, But Mackenzie was on afterwards. Wouldn't like to have seen her. Uh, But yeah, it was, you know, Icebreaker's cool. If you ever get the chance, listeners, go to it. Because something to do in Feb, innit? There isn't really much to do in Feb. Um, But yeah, good night out. Right, you've bought a lot of stuff. Yes. Let's talk about that. Comfort of the drum stool. Um, I've done a bit of shopping, boy. Yeah, a bit. A <laughs> bit. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, right, okay, look, upgrades for my kit. Where am I at? What have I got? And recently yeah. I've had some new cymbals. I've had a, the, the BDC snare, the power sense tones. Like, 
been very simple, snare, sort of heavy, you yeah. know. Uh, I'm not at a point yet <clears throat> for new shells. Um, but I was like, well, where where am I? Where's the bits that, you know, could be improved? And let's be honest, every bit of a drum kit can be improved and added upon mm. f- ad infinitum. I think that's the Latin. Uh, it's definitely Is not. it? I don't know. Um, and number one target was stool. Yep. Was what um I I was going I'm going to go for the bits my body touches mm. pedals stool okay yeah 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 I like comfort. that comfort because I was, you know someone said oh, I saw online invest your money in the things you sit on and lie on mm. shoes sofa bed the things that you make contact with and I applied that to the drums so That's number good. one drum stool now a few weeks ago. Uh, maybe even before Christmas, when I was down the old G Russ, uh, Graham Russell, I was thinking about a new stool. And as you know, I like to take my time with decisions. Mm. Um, and they had, you know, I've heard Rock and Sock yep. are up there with the comfiest sort of stools. And the Ahead Spinal G, the Ahead mm. Spinal Glide. Mm. And I just sat on every stool they had. And I sat on the, and I sat on them and I went, yeah, no, that's a huge difference. Yeah. Like sitting on a rock and sock. Yeah, yeah. From I've just got a stand, very standard circular Mapex, you know, mm. black leather on a on a three legged uh dual braced uh, spindle. Mm. Um but uh, I, I sat on the a uh, head spinal G and my body melted. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, this is this is comfort. Yeah. Um so I yeah I I bought one um the other last week and I bought the one I've got the one with the backrest mm-hmm. and I just read a lot online if you have back problems or if you have back issues it, this this is the seat for you yeah and having sat on one I was like <laughs> yeah I think so uh, so yeah I've got one um oh fucking hell it's brilliant <laughs> oh it's just unbelievable yeah um it's a beast it's a bit of a beast it's got four legs. That's a lot. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one that. more than three. Well, I've got that, but I'm trying to picture, like, how. Because it looks weird. Because so, so many things in drums are threes, aren't they? Yeah. Simple stand legs are threes. Floor tom legs are threes. Yeah. But this has got four, so it does look it does look odd. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, incredibly comfortable. What, um, what, 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 what makes what, what? it, what makes it comfortable? Like, what? What are they doing that's different to your one that you've already had? I don't know, but I guess like what whatever the pads are made of, mm. the the actual material that you're you're sitting on. Mm. Um, but this this is one of the main sort of visually well main difference is that it's it's like it's bicycle seat shaped, you know, like a big wide bicycle seat. So it's got the sort of it's not purely circular. It's got the point near the near the cock and balls basically. Yeah. Um, but it's made up of two separate pads. So there's actually a line down the middle. If you were to draw from uh, when you're sat from the end of your dick down your perineum through to your asshole, <laughs> is that is that the there's title? There's actually a gap. So essentially, you've got one cushion per cheek. Yeah, yeah, I've seen the. <laughs> yeah, so, and so, but you don't really feel like you're sat on two different <laughs> things. But just the way I don't know. I guess you know. It, it, yeah, but. Does it open it up, this maybe, shape? if you've got both arse cheeks on a seat? And then I don't know, if it just does, like, to your, <laughs> just to your ass. gives you, like, more support? Where you're I saw, sort of supporting I think each I, cheek separately. And, I but think the backrest, man. Woo, oh, that that's does nice. sound good. I I'm have seen the, uh, yeah, the, the sort of absence of stool where it's like a gap. And, yeah. you know, I've looked at it, gone, like, it looks what like if your you balls go, I fall through. <laughs> 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 then you lose them forever it's like yeah. losing anything down the gap well, in the sofa I try and do my trick and stand up while playing <laughs> the balls the balls stay in the stool trapped <laughs> fuck <laughs> yeah um, but yeah the backrest so I, I, I did a, some session drumming last week as well so it was the first time I was using some of this stuff and and, and sitting on the stool and it, it took a bit of getting used to like you know mm. where am I actually going to sit ha- in a relation um but just having that support and sort of leaning back a bit 
help him with posture. I, I felt honestly, I felt like I could sit here for days yeah. and play. This is this is a game changer. Uh, so that's the stall. Um, I've got pictures of the kit set up, so I'll, uh, we'll pop them on the gram. Do it. What else does my body touch? <laughs> uh, apart from the uh, um, listeners' hearts and minds, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, feet. What are my feet touching? Yeah. No, so I've gone a uh, new hi-hat stand, a new double kick drum pedal. Um, you got a new hi-hat stand? Is that, I didn't even yes, know that. Yes, yes, yes. I know. bought a lot of stuff, George. <laughs> calm down, calm down. Um, but double pedal was on my list. Yeah. And I now own a direct drive kick pedal. That's very cool. So we've talked about the uh, difference between chain and direct drive before. And I've got direct drive. I did a lot of research on... Yeah. Looking at, you know, you got your DWs. You're yawning, that's good. So, uh, so got, <laughs> long day. <laughs> you got your DWs. You got um, uh, Yamaha, Pearl, uh, Trick, all those sorts of, uh, obviously, Tama. And I mentioned about the multicolored marble dipped ones. Yeah. Decided not to go for one of those. But I went down G-Russ and um, tried out the Yamaha one that Sam Sanders has got with the blue yeah, bits, yeah, yeah. which is very nice. Uh, DW the timer and trick and for me i've got uh it was the pearl demon xr mm. that i've that I've, I've, I've purchased <laughs> um let me tell you not cheap no no and i tried but, to guess and you were like eh, a bit more than that keep yeah. going up just keep going up <laughs> uh you can google it um yeah. <laughs> but christ alive it's like oh that's what a smooth pedal feels like really honestly it's unbelievably quick yeah and it looks great as well and it's got the the beaters are like plastic mm. but like quite small it's hard to describe yeah, but they're yeah, not yeah, like yeah. fully sized beaters um but yeah direct drive double kick pedal and it was just like uh, i mean you, you just push it down and just watch it wobble mm. <laughs> for the resistance is so small but yeah really direct drive it was like fucking hell yeah this is um this is quick. Now, they, 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 there's a few sort of different models of Pearl, and there's there's a they got like the red line, and there is another Demon, but the Demon XR was designed in conjunction with a sort of quite speed metal drummer. Yeah, um, I can't remember his name, um, but f- he plays incredibly fast. Now, I ain't going to be doing that sort of stuff. No, but I was like, I'm ready for the big time. Yeah, and I tried a lot of I tried a lot of pedals out, and that was the one that I was like, yeah, this is. This is very good. Um, Does I'm going to move on quick. Go just on. quick one question. Does it feel too quick? Does it feel like, oh, bloody hell, my foot's going to fly off? Or is it okay? Because sometimes no, I play with different pedals and you're like, whoa, I, how do you do this? I can't get any control. Yeah, I know what you mean. And I felt that when I very when I first played um, Sam's Yamaha one. Yeah. I was like, Christ. But I really, I really think like... The, the 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 XR as well actually this, this Demon XR has like much bigger thicker springs mm. so you get um, whilst whilst the speed at pushing your foot down is incredibly quick the the subsequent spring back mm. is as quick so you feel like you're getting that resistance does mm. that make sense yeah whereas on my and I I had my other pearl pedal um, set up because I was just skinning up another bass drum and I pushed down that I was like oh this is like trudging through grit yeah and shit mm. and it's like definitely it's different and I think it will take me a bit of time to get used to but I think the balance of is it too quick or is it just not what I'm used to is more just I'm not used to it but it felt so much easier to play yeah and I felt like my leg and my leg muscles and foot was having to just not work as hard. That's good. Which is good. And I'm sitting on the head spinal G. Mm. It's like, this is mm. so comfortable mm. to play. Um, and then I was like, well, I'll get a hi-hat stand as well, you know. Um, again, did, did some decent research. And the one that... Um, stuck out to me was Pearl. Mm. Um, I've always liked Pearl stuff. Um, and it's the H2050. It's their top 
top right. of the line hi hat stand. Uh, it's two legged. That's what I was um, going to ask. Yeah, I much, uh, yeah, I much prefer a two legged hi hat stand. Um, but this has this is chain drive, um, but it has like two separate chains working along the sort of axis. So there's one chain on on a cam that when you push the beater down, but then there's a separate chain that links to the actual hi hat stem. So you've got two chains working simultaneously. But what you can do on this, I haven't tried it yet, is you can actually switch out the cam. So the bit the bit the chain goes round, mm. they have different shaped cams which give you different um shaped different s- speeds or resistance, things like that. So mm. you c- that's interchangeable. But I mean it's just it's fucking solid. It looks great. Um and actually I worked out like that double the my old Natal hi hat and pearl double pedal I'd had for I think nearly twelve years. Yeah. Because I got them when I started playing in decade. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like fuck that it's twelve years ago. So yeah. <laughs> but then I also threatened uh New Year's kind of resolution, really, what what things we wanted to do for 2024. Mm. And one of them was I wanted to reskin all my toms. Yeah. If you remember. I remember that. Um, and I said, I don't know if I said it on here, but I definitely said to you, but I want to give Remo a, a pop. Yeah. Because I've been Evans for ages. Let's just, let's try some Remo out. Mm. So I bought a full new set of skins for my four toms, batter and rezo, top and bottom, and I've also reskinned batter and rezo on my kick as well. Um, so I'll talk about kick briefly because actually I've stuck with Evans. I've stuck with the Emad two, mm-hmm. but I've got the matching Emad rezo skin now as well. Whereas before I just had the stock Mapex on there, so it's all black. It's got a slightly smaller porthole, which has that EMAD foam mm. that comes on the ring around the center, the, 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 the batter skin, but it has that surrounded in plastic around the porthole. Um, so really not much has sort of changed, but I've just got a fresher kick skin because, um, you know, they're so expensive, you don't change them that often. Um, and I've also gone with me Evans double EQ patch as well. Now, Tom's... So, I was like, I want to give Remo a shot, mm. but what Remo do I want? Mm. What 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 do I want to get? And one of the things I said about doing was switching the Rezo back to a one-ply. Mm. Because quite often, for, for a long time now, I've been using Evans G2, which is a dual-ply on top and bottom. And what I thought about doing is like, you know, that was just to help control overtones and to have very punchy sort of rock drums. But I kind of, you know, traditionally maybe you could say it's a two-ply on top and a single-ply on bottom. And I was like, I want to go back to that and see what I can do now, tuning-wise, with a bit more understanding and more experience to, to make that sort of work. So I was looking, okay, well, what other common Remo skins used? And obviously you've got, you know, you see the names Emperor, Ambassador, mm. Diplomat, things like that. But what what do these mean, yeah. George? Yeah, good question. What do they mean? So I'm, I might do a deeper dive I- in skins at, uh, on another episode. Mm. But so the Emperors, uh, so I'm talking about clear skins as well. You can get coated versions, but I'm sticking with clears. So the Emperors are a two-ply, mm. two-ply clear. There's no internal dampening there's no you know like a pinstripe or anything like that they are just a fully clear skin dual ply two ply that's the emperors the ambassador is the same but single ply Mm. so again no dampening now these are essentially the equivalents of the evans g2 and g1 ah so there's no inner dampening there's no dots there's nothing Mm. they're just a Clear skin. Just a bog standard. Here's your skin. Bog standard. You deal with it. You deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> you sort it out. It's <laughs> not our job. Yeah. You, if you want dampening, you do it yourself. Fuck off. Yeah. Here's a skin. Call a bloody dampener in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but leave us alone, yeah? Yeah. Uh, 
So your G2 is your dual ply and your G1 is your single ply. And you can very much put those together, the Emperor and the G2 and the Ambassador and the G1. Mm. So I was like, right, rather than do anything fancy with power dot reversers or pinstripes or anything like that, I'm going to go Emperor on the top, mm -hmm. Ambassador on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Right, so I've got my dual ply and my single ply. I could have done this with G2s and G1s, but I wanted to hear... I'd have a better understanding of the equivalency of switching to a single ply on the bottom if I stuck with essentially the equivalence. Yeah. So the changes I'm making is going Evans to Remo and single ply on the bottom. Yep. So I reskinned all four toms. Um, and I'm liking it. Mm. I'm liking it. You can definitely... I did this yeah studio session with Neil um, last week, so it was all fresh... And we definitely noticed that there was a bit more sort of tone yeah. from the shell. Like it had a bit more life. It was a bit more, I don't want to say natural sounding, but there was a, there was a bit more natural sustain, mm. I think, from the single ply, uh, having that as a rezzo. Um, and actually what we found, a couple of moon gels on the 12-inch rack and O-rings, E-rings on the 14 and 16-inch floor. Mm. But one thing I did notice as well, actually, though, is I, I didn't... Normally, I have a little bit of tape on the bottom skin of the floor, Tom. Mm. Just going from the, the rim to onto the skin. And I didn't really need that. Yeah. And I don't know if that's necessarily because I'm a bit better at tuning mm. or whatever. But I found, actually, quite quickly, I was able to get a very good balance mm. of dampening and uh, tone mm. from the drum. So... And I don't know that uh, there's, I don't know if it, just my ears playing tricks, but there feels like there's potentially a little bit more of a, um, like stick impact on the Remos. There's a little bit more of like a, a definition, mm. maybe, mm. but fine. But this is then what interested me is when I got all these skins, I was like, right, I've got the Emperors for the top, Ambassadors for the bottom. Now I was like. I was expecting the single ply to be a lot thinner because mm. it's like, well, that's a dual ply. But I was like, well, this ambassador doesn't feel that much thinner than the the emperor. But what I learned is, so the dual ply is two seven mil and the single is one ten mil. Mm. So it ain't half as thick. You know what I mm. mean? Mm. It's still single ply, but it's thicker. Uh, you can use, you know, ambassadors on the on the top, you know, as you batter. But that's what I did, and um, so far, pretty happy. And I, th cool. I think, I, I think the difference if I had G twos, G ones, wouldn't be huge. But I'm, I'm giving Remo a shot. And this is what I also learned. So you know, pinstripes have the black line around the sort yeah. of about an inch in. Yeah. The Evans equivalent is the EC two. Ah, uh, okay. I've used those. They've got the black line, and it's like yeah. going. Something just connect, and uh, you know it's ignorance or whatever. But finding out, really going okay between the two brands, what are the sort of equivalents? Yeah, and it's like, and then once you have that understanding, that really helped me know what to kind of go with because mm. I, I I knew where I was at, and I knew where I could sort of go. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's going to be uh, you know that's cool. Fantastic. And then lastly, um. <laughs> I uh, shall I talk about going to Graham Russell with Liam? Yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah. So, um, Liam from Young Pine, who we've had on the show, mm. uh, go check that episode out, and also go check out their new single. Yeah. Um, call you up, which I produced. Um, check out all their songs; they're all great. Yeah, yeah. Um, he he spoke to me at, at the last rehearsal, and he's he's like he wanted to get a new a new crash cymbal, and maybe some other stuff. And I said to him, look, I need to get some stuff from Graham Russell. I'll come down with you, and I'll help help you, help you pick, you mm. know. Um, so we went down on the morning of Icebreaker, actually. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got in the car, I picked him up, and I was like, what's, what are you after, and what's your budget? And who he, are you? Like, what do you want? Who yeah. are you? <laughs> and um, he wanted a new snare drum, mm. and then maybe a cymbal prioritising crash. 
but let's see. So he told me his budget. So I was like, cool, we've got, we got stuff to work with here. What are you after, snare wise? He really liked my Pearl Sensor Tone mm. that we used in the studio, you know, the 120 oh, yeah, quid yeah. one that you got That's as cool. well. But I don't think they got any more of those. But he's like, I really <laughs> like that. So he's like a 14 inch steel, 14 by five and a half drum. Cool, we've got a target in mind. Um, and he really likes my 19 inch Legacy Crash. So we go down to see Graham Russell. This is another story for another day, but we walk in quite early Saturday just after opening. In incredible pile of drum cases just, just in reception. Mm. And Graham says, sorry about the mess. I've just been to someone's house and bought 34 drum kits. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then, I'm not joking, the shop was full yeah. of drums to the point you couldn't even get on a platform yeah. to even look at stuff. Piles and piles of drum kits. And um, we'll talk about that another day. Anyway, so then I was like, right, let's look at the snare drums. Um, and lo and behold, there was a 14 by five and a half steel power sensor tone. I'd say better than the ones we have, like a few models up. Mm. Much more solid sort of construction. Uh, and it was just like, I know this is going to be the one, mm. you know. Ticks all the boxes, but we'll go and hear what it sounds like. We also grabbed another um, Atama snare as well. And Graham just said, I'll just go and set it up on the kit upstairs and... If, if you don't mind just sorting yourselves out I was like great mm. he gave us a snare weight and a drum key and some sticks and we took them up so I just tuned up this Pearl sensor tone and I just played it and Liam went yep that's the one <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it sounded really good yeah it was really tight mm. had a massive like it was crack you mm. know a big crack a good pop yeah yeah yeah, one. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Back. yeah. It sounded really good it felt sturdy uh, it was ten lugs rather than eight. It just it it felt like this is all very well. I think it had like I think they're called floating lugs as well. Mm. Um, but it was like this is and for the price it was like if he doesn't buy it, I'm buying yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we were happy with that. And then we were looking at symbols. So I just went round and we just grabbed nineteen inch crash symbols. Mm. There was a couple of Sabians. Um, there was a is minor. that what you wanted? Nineteen inch. Then. 19 inch was the goal because yeah. of my legacy he used that for recording mm. and, and for rocking out on so that was our target mm. so there was a couple of 19, 19 inch Sabians there was a Extreme and an Explode mm -hmm. both HHX hand hammered so we put them on the stands and straight away one of them was just like yeah this sounds amazing mm. they both sounded really good um, but one of them just I th maybe one was 18 and one was 9 but it was like that sounds that sounds really good, um, but then it was like, well, just to check, I'm going to go grab some other 18s and 20s from Zildjian and Minor, um, and very quickly pop them on, hit them. Yeah, no, so you just want to sort of double check, and then I grabbed a 20 inch K cluster crash. Mm -hmm. I was like, 20 inch, let's just pop it on. So we had the other Sabian that. Liam was going to get that he really liked and I put this other K on and he hit it and it was like that sounds really good yeah and I went just to let you know Liam I'm going to buy this one <laughs> <laughs> um, so I bought another crashing ball as well so yeah third crashing ball I, I said to Neil like he's like why have you bought another symbol <laughs> because you know it's a good question yeah. and my main reason is because I won't use it for weddings or anything like that mm. but in the studio it's Rocking out on the crash to my right, mm. when you're finishing a drum fill down by the old Flory Toms, mm. if you're then starting that crash beat, y y you have to go straight to that crash. Mm. So then you miss out on the explosion. Yeah. So having a third crash next to that. So are you having this crash? To so I'll have two on my right. Oh, got you. Cool. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've been shopping. Um, you certainly have. And then I've bought another stand for that online. And I've, because I'm a knobhead, I've bought the exact same crash stand that I have. My other three crashes. That's fair enough. Yeah, yeah. But it's the Mapex. I think it's a B600. It's a Mars series stand. It's nothing fancy at all. Yeah. Um, But they're just, for the money, 60 quid. Like, they're, they're oh, just yeah. really... Really, that's really that's good. the sort of thing you buy and you go, oh, do I, should I get 60 quid or should I buy my 40? And you're like, oh my God, just pay 60 and you'll never ever think about it again because you'll have it forever. 
It's like, yeah. Well, I think for me, it was, it, it's going, well, wh- why don't I, you know, buy like one several models higher that's mm. Mm. more expensive. It's like, no, nah, just, these stands are really good. Yeah. And for 60 quid, fine. So, yeah, a lot of um, changes. Well, me to too. Kit, but we'll put, well, yes, yes, yes. I also bought a new drum kit. Dun, dun, dun. Pray, uh, do tell. Well, can actually, can I tell that at, this was the day after Ben Corner's party? Yeah, it was, yeah. And you said to me, <laughs> I said, oh, are you staying in Pompey tonight? Are you going back to Brighton? You said, I'm mm. going back to Brighton. I'm like, oh, I've got this jam session. I don't really want to do it. But I said I'd do it. But I'd do it. Yeah. And then later that day, yeah. please, well, continue. Well, firstly, I hope the guy <laughs> doesn't listen to this pod. Um, but I... Uh, yeah, Sorry, George I, was absolutely buzzing <laughs> for this jam. So he, excited. He bloody loves jam. So it was, yeah. Like it was, a wasp in summer. It was at a mate's house. Fucking loves jam. I don't know. Jam sessions, when it's in front of people, I'm all for it. You know what I mean? But if it's at someone's house. You want house, the applause. You want the glory. I do. When it's at someone's house, I can sometimes be like, are we just going to be playing funk for four hours, you know, in someone's room, you know? But anyway. He had this ama- Oh my god! He had the most amazing electric kit. It cost him three grand. It was massive. It was really cool. But by the side of it, he had a. I could see it. I could see what it was already because I've even said before, I've wanted a smaller kit for smaller gigs because my kit is massive and it's mental bringing it to places or even just places where it's like the stage isn't as big. You know. Anyway, and I always thought, well, the Gretsch Catalina kit is a kit I've always heard of. And I'm aware it's small, but good. What? You got something to say? Well, uh, remember when Jack emailed us his pictures of his kit? Yeah. He had a Gretsch Catalina yeah. and an electric kit. And we were looking at how lovely that Gretsch Catalina was. And I said, that's the sort of thing you're after, isn't Yeah. It? That's the sort of thing you'd... Because you had said you were looking for a smaller kit. Yeah. And, and I, I think like, yeah. maybe that, that added to it. And I think I just, from... I had a mate who had one when I shared a house of him years ago and who actually listens to this pod i think so ryan if you're listening i'm pretty sure we got you the big rye um but i uh yeah it was just it was just stacked up and in his in his room and i was like what's what's the deal with that you got a drum kit there he's like yeah i don't really use it anymore i'm looking to whatever it doesn't matter and i was like well i'm in the market for that specific kit he went, oh, mate, I could just give it to you on a long-term loan or, you know, if you want to buy it. I was like, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so I went and picked it up the next day or something. I can't remember. You dropped it around. Um, I haven't really had the chance. You, you texted me and said, I might be getting a Gratch Catalina. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know, secondhand and you. Yeah. And uh, you said, oh, of this, of this guy. And you went, I'm getting it in 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, well, that was exact. it. Yeah, because I didn't know <laughs> if entirely I, I was going to get it. So I was like, I'll wait until I messaged him the next day and I messaged him because I was eager to get it and I said look do you want me to come around today I was quite forceful and he went no I'll drop it around give me 10 I was like give me 15 or whatever so anyway I uh I haven't actually really played it that much yet um but it looks lovely it's all stacked up and after this pod I'm going to go to the studio and kind of just go through it and see what's what but the thing is he bought it and it still just has the factory heads. So I think I'm in, you know, I'm ready for a reskinning thing. But as always, I like a goal with anything I've got. So I've got a gig with Lennon on Feb the er, 16th. I can't remember, 17th, something like that. A Friday in Feb, maybe next week. It is next week. And, um, and it's a pub gig. And I thought, perfect. If there's ever a chance to try out a small kit, it's then. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it, but it's nice, you know, three hundred quid for the lot, um, kick toms and snare, uh, sizes eighteen kick, um, by something I don't know what, but it's small, twelve and fourteen toms and then a fourteen snare. Nice, but it's just perfect. It's just I already know, it's gonna be so much easier for gigs. I'm gonna put it in my car and go. Oh my god, look at that. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, it's, it's all in. And I have so much more room, you know. I mean, I, I've gigged with a 14-inch floor time for, qu- for quite a while now. Yeah. And e- that is a, even that is a big difference. Yeah. So, even you know, do it, you doing that and dropping your kick down to an 18-inch, yeah. massive. Oh, it's going to be insane. 
Um, but no, I'm, I'm. What are you going to do? What are you thinking, skin wise? What well, are you going for? Ah, what this you is a good question. Um, probably end. So if you've got this. questions about the ambassador <laughs> and the emperors. <laughs> well, so this is the thing. I know, man. So people always go on about the Gretsch Catalina, and I think it's almost assumed that you should get coated skins because mm. it sort of uh, lends itself to jazz, baby. And. Uh, but there was a few people, you know. I, I, I think Gretsch does, doesn't it? Like I think it does. Yeah. It, but but I bet you know maybe Gretsch like we we do rock too. Well, I looked online and a few people were like, look, if you use these coat, if you use these clear ones, I can't remember which brand or whatever. They were like, it's well punchy. So maybe think about that. I don't know. I almost don't want to just go. Well, everyone says coated's the best, and then mm. go for that. So I don't know. But I um, I'll have a look. Maybe I'll just I'll just copy what you've done. And uh, but do it on this kit as a good starting point because then I can try out the whole emperor ambassador ting. Well, yeah, and I I think potentially with that and um, maybe part of the reason I I did that was because it it's almost like that's your that's your basic default. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's your they're really good, but that's your there's no extra little bits, you know. So that's your st- really good starting point, mm. and you can't really go wrong with it. But then, then once you've done that and got to know it, then you can maybe then you'd hear the difference more if you did switch to like a pinstripe or something. Yeah. Or do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah that's totally, your, totally. Your your bog sort of standard. Um, but anyway, yeah. got a new kit and it's it's going to be great. It's going to be it's just going to be for any function gig I ever do from now on. That's the kit that's going. I'm never using. I'm, I don't think I'll use the Star Classic again. You know, I'm 30 this year. I'm not lugging that shit around. Um, but that's <laughs> that. Right, quickly, because we've nearly been going an hour, I'll end wow. with, um, I went to a pizza making course, didn't I? I should probably tell you about that. Just oh, cause, yeah. Cause why not? He's done croissants. Done croissants. Nailed. Now for He's pizza. He's onto the pizzas now. Completely different vibe with this one. Oh, my God. Croissants start at, I can't remember what time, 10 a.m., something like that. This pizza course started at half six in the evening. And you turn up and they're like, what do you want to drink? Beer or wine? You're like, oh, okay, cool. I was like, I'll have a beer, please. And uh, and yeah, they take us into this room. We didn't make our own dough because they have this massive dough machine, which is quite cool. So they show us how they put the flour in. But then once they've done the dough, they're like, right, they prove it. And then have a bit of dough and make a pizza. It's great. And I was on my own, but I didn't care. You know, I kind of feel like I'm somewhat living the life of a uh, a person who's, uh, this isn't the case, but has just come out of a relationship. And it's like, do you know what? I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to go a pizza making course on my own. And it's going to be great. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to do all the things <laughs> yeah. that they never let me do. <laughs> exactly. But and and the funny thing is, Elfie's putting you on yeah, these yeah, courses. Yeah, yeah, Get out of the house, for fuck's sake. Yeah, fuck off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, I... Uh, <laughs> getting you getting you ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, we made these pizzas. Uh, I, I did the course, it was a vegan course, which was the letdown because it meant there was no... Um, cheese proper cheese uh but i just i just said yes of course because i was like i don't care if it's vegan i want to learn how so we had like it was the vegan lasagna pizza we had to make so it's like a bechamel sauce and like a ragu and stuff but it was just quite cool then you put it you you make up your pizza and then they let me do the the shovel or whatever and you shovel it into the oven and and uh here's a fun fact to make this not boring how long do you reckon it takes to cook a pizza in a pizza oven? Um, eight minutes. One minute thirty. Wow, that's quick, isn't it? That's way quicker than I thought it'd be. Um, anyway, then you get it out and then you eat your pizza and you chat there. I, ch- I was, I ended up chatting to a lovely couple, and that you asked, what do they think about pineapple? There was a guy who kept asking all the Italian people there, what do you think of pineapple? And they were like, I've tried it once. It's okay, but, you know, it's not my go-to. They didn't go full Italian and be like, it's a travesty, you know, or whatever, whatever. Because yeah. they get very passionate about their food, don't they, the Italian? You know, if you if you, if you you snap your spaghetti or if you ask for ketchup on your pizza or, you know, mm. have a cappuccino with your meal, all these rules that, you know. Yeah, something like times of the day. If you order a coffee at a certain time yeah. of the day, they're like, you know, you're meant to. Yeah. Um, you know. So anyway... 
but I don't think pineapple. What's next? What's the next course you're gonna do? Bread. I reckon I'd I'd love to do a bread one because uh, yeah. be good. I think bread's probably the only one that I do and then actually do at home. You know what I mean? Like pizza, mm. you really need a good oven, and right. you need yeah. to be up to fucking five hundred degrees. And you know, conventional ovens, you can preheat them all day, baby. But all day, two fifty is probably your limit. Two fifty top, yeah. You're topping out at two fifty, on it. And croissants. I mean, I've still got some dough in the fridge, but I don't know. Bin, it takes forty eight hours. I but, don't think, yeah. but bread, it's too long. But, yeah, for for something you can get a little for fifty p. Um, but yeah. bread, you know, bread's quite a quite a good one. So I think a bread course would be good. But anyway, we have been talking for an hour. So um, Yeah, we just had a flurry of things going well, we on. we did, yeah. Um, um, next week, we'll have my friend Dean. Uh, lot yeah, of, do you know? A lot do of you know? people may go, oh, they're running out of guests. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. So if you <laughs> think that, give us some guests. No. Um, so enjoy that because that was a good chat and uh, I hope the edit wasn't too bad for that one, Ben. Mm, I've not done it yet, oh. so we'll see. Okay. Just, just <laughs> put the whole thing out, who cares? Um, yeah, we've got, yeah, we've got the Dino on. He's been mentioned on here lots. You do a lot of work with him, a lot of gigging. Yeah. He's a guitarist. Yeah, um, yeah that, anyway. that's why I was like, are you running out of guests? Because he's not a drummer. But um, but I thought it'd be good to get a perspective of a, yeah. of a non-drummer. But we have got some good... good uh, as well as Dean, we've got some other great guests coming up, yep. including one episode we've recorded today, which will come out in a few weeks. Yep. But we'll leave it there yeah. on that. Um, but yeah, I'll send you pictures of my new stuff because uh, it's a big, big upgrade on the old drums. Yeah, yeah. I'm ready. For me. Um, yeah, both of both of us. Got bloody <laughs> yeah. Rich Catalina been now a great kicking week. about. Been a great week. Been a great, been an expensive week. <laughs> Right. Uh, but yeah, email, keep in touch. Uh, yeah. Anyone else from France? Anyone else from any other uh, any other countries get in touch? Yeah. Um, let us know where you're listening from and send us there your kit pictures. Uh, Instagram, Drum and Drummer Podcast. Email, Drum and Drummer Pod at gmail.com. Yeah. Uh, Twitter, X, Apple Drummers, but uh, Twitter's shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And you spread the good word and give us five stars that we thoroughly deserve. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thank you for listening to Drum and Drummer. You can find us on Instagram at Drum and Drummer Podcast. And you can send us an email to drumandrummerpod at gmail.com. Remember, just pick up the sticks and twat it.